Hi everyone, Anthony Fantano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for another installment of Let's Argue, where I go online, I take your hot takes, your hot takes, your hot takes, and your hot takes, and I respond to the hottest of those takes in this video. Uh, let's do it. I should also note in this episode, I specifically asked you guys for some 2021 musical predictions looking forward to this year. What do you think is going to pan or play out musically? Uh, let's see what some of uh, your crystal ball-isms ended up being. Kendrick won't drop. I mean, if Kendrick didn't end up dropping, I wouldn't really be surprised because he's done really well for himself. I'm sure he's sitting on a fat pile of cash. Uh, he's pretty set at this point. And he made it pretty clear, or at least it's been hinted at, that uh, he was going to drop in 2020. Pandemic has essentially pushed that back. And uh, I mean, since he's already pushed back as a result of the pandemic and the pandemic has not stopped, and it seems like things are starting to progress to a good place with the vaccine, possibly, potentially. I don't see why he wouldn't already just like continue this hiatus, continue just pushing things back until it's the most ideal time to put the record out. Billie Eilish comes out with a new album later in the year, will be underwhelmed because her first album was so good and say it's a sophomore slump, but the album will get passionate uh, fan base in the following years that thinks it's better than her debut. So, <laughs> what a tale! So are we talking about merely like the music nerd audience being disappointed in it? Or, or like, will Billy's hardcore teenage fans like abandon her as well? And then will, will she go on to make a good third record? But then it'll take like 15 to 20 years for people to look back on the second one and be like, yeah, that was, that was actually really good. It was really ahead of the curve. It was actually really influential. I, I, I know everyone hated it at the time, but like it, it, it inspired so many albums afterwards. But yeah, I, I feel like it's one thing to predict that a following record is going to flop, but it's another thing to predict it's going to flop. Then we'll flip on it like years later, and um, uh, it's uh, it's 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 a big one. I wonder what the over under is on that. If I'm to make a prediction here, I think Billy is mostly going to stick to her guns on the second LP, and uh, and and still stay creative in the process because there's not a whole lot of artists in pop right now that uh, uh, sound quite like her. So I, I think her and Phineas would be quite justified in um, at least to a degree sticking to what has worked in the past. Anthony will not only review an avenged sevenfold album, but he'll create a new category of rating music called Not Bad, where he reviews non-starters that turned out to be above average. <laughs> That's actually not uh, a, a bad idea. I wonder what I would sort of have follow that uh, title instead of an explosion. Uh, let, let's have Austin uh, try it out, figure it out for a second. Um, this new Corey Feldman album, it's not bad. <laughs> New MCR music, 100%. No way the boys have just been twiddling their thumbs this past year after all their reunion shows got canceled. <laughs> uh, yeah, while I'm sure that the MCR boys have not just been uh, chilling and doing absolutely nothing during this entire pandemic year, uh, the band didn't reform just to put out a new comeback record after how many fucking years uh, just to have the maximum money-making potential of that comeback completely squandered by a uh, no tour. They need to be able to charge people out the ass for that. They're entitled to it. Travis Scott's Utopia will change the game. After years of mixing hip hop with a lot of psychedelic space vibe and stuff like that, Travis will finally change his aesthetic for uh, complete, starting a new era in hip hop music with his new project. I mean, I... I hope so. That would be cool. That would be interesting. I mean, certainly Travis has uh, shown some experimental proclivities here and there with some of uh, some of his recent stuff, like that track he did with Rosalia was kind of uh, uh, insane. You know, crazy he would suddenly go into a reggaeton direction for a, a beat there. But, um, you know, I'm having a hard time foreseeing 
things panning out exactly this way. Not that I doubt that Travis Scott has the artistic capacity to do this. I think Travis does have the ability to change. I think Travis actually is a lot uh, smarter and has a lot more taste than some of the people who actually listen to his music a lot of the time. And what I mean by that is I don't know if a majority of his fans are really expecting for him or wanting for him to change things uh, up all that much on his new record. I think uh, the trap psych formula that he has developed is still very relevant. He is still very much at the forefront of it, and it's still selling. People are still copying it. I feel like, uh, I, I don't know, uh, artistically and financially in terms of like prevailing music trends, there's not really a whole lot of pressure for Travis to change. I think if he were to change, especially like wildly, he would only be hurting his money-making potential at this point. And I think Travis Scott, considering all the recent endorsement deals and so on and so forth, has really turned his brand into a business. And you have to consider that like, Travis is also considering that on the music side as well. Posthumous MF Doom album. Please. I mean, we're most likely going to get some kind of posthumous MF Doom something. Uh, I, I please uh, hope that it is good. Now, I trust that those who are involved with MF Doom's uh, estate, catalog, whatever it be, um, most likely care about his legacy enough to not do something that's completely shit or disrespectful. That being said, though, Doom's output schedule over the years had grown spottier and spottier, and part of the reason I presume is because he seems like the type of artist who only really puts out something when he really knows he's onto something or feels like he's got something the fans will be excited about. I, I wonder how much he you know, actually has like left in the vault that were he to have some sort of decision in this, like that he would actually choose to, to release to the public uh, as is, or maybe with very minor uh, changes or variations. Nav will release something you genuinely enjoy. Well, I, I did like that one track that he did like with Gunna and Travis Scott. I thought that one was kind of cool. I thought that one was decent. Um, but in terms of like an entire project, an entire project, a whole one from front to back, the Snab album, it's not bad. <laughs> Everyone will suddenly hold whole lot of red in the highest regard in terms of trap after initially hating it. Uh, maybe? I mean, after having heard the record myself, I think it's got uh, some real highlights on it and some cool ideas and uh, and bold experimental moments for Cardi where I think he's really onto something. But that being said, it's, it's not a very consistent record. And there are even a lot of tracks on the back end where I, I, th I think he... Uh, almost like starts phoning it in and, and resting on sounds and and uh, deliveries that um, you know might have worked for him during Die Lit, just sort of resting on his laurels in a way. Uh, again, not saying the record is entirely bad, and I do think it has like some uh, standout spots, but uh, it's not it's not a very consistent LP. And if this, this this is an album that people are going to down the road think is like you know a, a godsend, like a totally amazing groundbreaking piece of art, I, I think that's something that's going to need to be contended with. Just how there are some. Some serious duds in the track list here and there. There are some sort of whacked out mixes that I don't think benefit every track on the LP. And overall, it's it's just not very focused. Smash Mouth will remain the greatest band alive. Uh, not if they keep fucking playing COVID shows, they're not. If they keep fucking playing COVID shows and uh, endangering their audience as well with COVID shows, uh, no, they will not continue to be the greatest band alive. I think people are starting to get really tired of trap and hyperpop, and they'll slowly fizzle out through the year, ushering in new forms of hip-hop and pop for 2020 and onward. Well, hyperpop just sort of popped off as a thing. It's hard to foresee it completely bottoming out over the next year, and on top of that, I mean, the same sort of goes for trap because it still remains to be very popular across the mainstream. I mean, look, when we're looking at uh, music trends and um, you know what's prevailing, what's relevant, what's popular, uh, historically speaking, um, th things don't lose popularity uh, or in in terms of like you know entire trends, entire genres. We're talking about like large scale music ecosystems here. You know, entire like cultures of popular music. Uh, things don't just suddenly become irrelevant because people get tired of them. Uh, more often than not, 
there becomes a new prevailing sound that replaces the old sound and people just sort of jump onto that instead. So if trap is to truly become uh, irrelevant over the next year, uh, or really anything that's popular right now, there would need to be something else there to replace it. Because what are people gonna do instead? Just listen to nothing because they're just tired of what's popular, they're tired of what uh, culturally is relevant. I mean, a lot of people just listen to shit because other people are listening to it. And there's nothing inherently wrong with that. You know, that's just sort of a, a part of music culture because uh, people take part in music as a community. Again, I, I think for anything in the mainstream right now in terms of a sound, a style, a trend to be done, to be over, there would need to be something else that will take its place. And what that thing is, who the hell knows, especially since at this point, when you look at the past decade, trap has undergone so many phases of evolution. You know, you had that early, uh, super early, I mean, we're, we're going back pre, you know, the 2010s here, where we're going back to a, uh, like T.I.'s trap music, then fast forwarding to uh, Waka Flocka Flames, Flocka Veli, and then from there you could start talking about uh, some of the psychedelic and cloud-based stuff, some of the super aggressive and distorted SoundCloud uh, rap, and uh, you know, other strains that have kind of popped off from there. Trap has sort of met the moment up until this point when it's come to, let's change the sound, let's change the style, let's change this, let's change that and provide kind of a, a new aesthetic within this framework everyone's familiar with. And the framework is so basic that you can swap out so many elements and, and still sort of foundationally meet a certain criteria and it still kind of fall into the trap category. The trap blueprint is so workable and so easy to alter. Um, it's, it's hard to foresee it completely bottoming out super soon. Crazy Frog. Um, <coughs> yeah, Crazy Frog drop in 2021, that would be hot. Who's gonna be on the features? Lana Del Rey feature? That'd be cool. All right, I think I'm gonna leave it at that. That has been uh, this this episode of Let's Argue. Thank you very much for watching. You're the best. Love you, love you, love you. Kiss ya. Kiss ya, kiss ya. Over here next to my head is another video that you could check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, let's argue uh, forever.